It's a reading from the notebooks by Muriel Torta, 1943, September the 15th. Jesus says, It is a widespread opinion among many Christians, and Catholic Christians, that my mother never suffered as mortals generally do. They believe that pain was upon her, but that, given her immaculate nature, nature, she was able to bear it easily, because grace attenuated it. In short, they believe that she felt the impact of the pain, but that it could not penetrate into her, because she was defended as if by an unbreakable shield, by her immaculate nature and by grace. But it is a serious error. Mary was the Immaculate One, free from the inheritance of Adam's sin and from the fruits of that sin, and in this sense, indeed, she could have been preserved from suffering, for the Creator had created the race of man free from pain and death, which is the supreme pain of man. But Mary was the the co-redeemer, and the mission of a redeemer is always a mission of infinite pain. Otherwise, how could a redeemer pay the ransom for the sins of others, redeem his brothers and sisters as a victim? Mary was a Redeemer, as I was the Redeemer. It was right, then, that pain should be her companion. Did pain perhaps spare me? No. And yet if Mary, by a miracle of God, was free from man's sin, she, born from two bodies becoming one flesh alone by human marriage, I, God, and thus free of any and all sin or shadow of sin, having become man through the marriage of innocence to grace, and therefore infinitely superior to her, was also sacrificed to pain to the greatest pain that has ever been and ever will be, for it was the pain of flesh and blood, mind, heart, soul, and spirit. Divine justice, which does not lie and never contradicts itself, was faithful to its promises of old and to the blameless one, as the first parents were blameless, and did not apply the two main condemnations of the flesh of Eve in particular, the pain of death and the pain of childbirth. My birth was an extremely sweet ecstasy, in the silence of the night which isolated the solitary and most humble dwelling from the world, Mary had plunged into her fervent contemplation of God. Mary's prayer was always rapture in God, and on emerging from the rapture, she came to know the Son. It was, indeed, the first tears of the Son of God which rested the mother from the spiritual contemplation of God to bring her, to bring her gaze to contemplate the greatest miracle in the universe, a God made flesh for the redemption of man. Mary's death was another rapture. Prayer enveloped her in its bands of love, obstructing all human sensibility on her part, and love came to meet her for the second time, to clasp to himself the bride desired since before time existed. And if the first encounter was a bending of love over the virgin to cover with his divine shadow the all-chaste one and make her fertile with divine flesh, the second encounter was the total embrace of the inviolate one with love, who attracted her to himself as far as the highest heaven. The last contemplation of Mary on earth had its end in heaven, where the one in love with God, the one desirous of the Son, could set herself forever in worship upon the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, her perennial desires and her eternal lovers. But before that hour, poor mother, she had to soak herself in pain. And I have already spoken to you about, footnote, in the dictation of July 2nd, what her pains of a whole lifetime were, whose peak was in the days of my death, and how, with her destiny as a co-redeemer, she felt all its bitterness, and I have told you more on more than one occasion why she felt it. Footnote. The references grouped together in note 57. Always consider that she is the master of pain, as I am the master of life. Always consider that pain is real, absolute, only when God is no longer close to a spirit to support it in trial. Consider that Mary was alone in the tremendous hour to know the horror of solitude and to expiate your acts of desperation as creatures. She is hope, in addition to faith and charity. The three theological virtues are embodied in her, for no one else in the world loved as she did, no one believed, and above all, no one hoped. She was an abyss of hope, and I have thus set her as your star to show you the way to heaven. If you believe in her always, you will never know the horror of despair, and will not kill yourselves with despair. May Mary, the hope of God, who awaited her to accomplish man's redemption, be man's hope. O mortals, do not lose sight of the morning star, whose rays are made of the seven swords driven into her most sweet and pure heart, driven in in, out of love for you. Live in her, and die in the Holy One, who is the Mother of God, and who prays for you without wearying before our throne. Mary, who fell asleep on God's heart, 
now lives in heaven with her glorified flesh, the soul that falls asleep upon the heart of Mary will have its flesh glorified in heaven when the time is fulfilled, for she is your salvation.' 